Hey Robot Makers, do you want to know how to upgrade your Raspberry Pi to the latest operating system without losing your files? Then keep watching. So let's dive straight into what this upgrade is all about. So today, November the 8th, the Raspberry Pi organization have released the latest version of the Raspberry Pi operating system and the version name for this is Bullseye. So currently this is only the 32-bit version, the 64-bit version will follow shortly, uh, this is currently in beta version. So this release has changed from Buster to Bullseye and that's the name of the Pixar Toy Story character which I think is Andy's horse. And this brings the Raspberry Pi OS up to the same version as Debian Linux which it is based upon. And it's recommended that you back up before you upgrade and one easy way to do that, particularly if you're a Mac user, is to use the disk utility wizard pop your sd card into the mac you can then do an image of that sd card and save it just in case so if you need any more information about this you can head over to raspberrypi.com they currently have a news article about this upgrade uh, but there's the long link if you require it and you're watching this slightly later on now if you download the image and overwrite the memory card you'll actually wipe everything that's on this card including any files any projects anything that you've got saved on it if you want to keep the files on here you'll have to do an upgrade in place and that's what we'll look at today so let's have a look at how we actually do this upgrade. There's two commands that we need. The first command is sudo apt update. And then after that's run to pull down some of the files, we do sudo apt full dash upgrade. And that begins the full upgrade process. Now, depending on what kind of Raspberry Pi you have, whether you have one of the newer Raspberry Pi 4s, a 3, a 2. So if you have one of the new Raspberry Pi Zeros, that will install quite a bit quicker than if you have the original Raspberry Pi Zero. So it depends on how much memory you've got, which board that it is, and also on your internet connection speed as well. So let's have a look at some of the new features, the good stuff. So it now runs on GTK plus three. It was previously running on GTK plus two, and they've changed around some of the user interfaces. This is the software that runs the window manager in the background, so the look and feel when you're using the Raspberry Pi desktop. So that's been upgraded. The window manager has been upgraded to a uh, version that's called Mutter and this is for Raspberry Pis with 2 gig of RAM or higher. So it's a bit of a niche for this particular release because you need to be on the 32-bit version but with a Raspberry Pi with 2 gig or more RAM. One of the new features as well is notifications. So at the right hand side of the desktop, when you get notified, a bit like on Windows or on a Mac, you can now see notifications come through. There's an updater plugin, which means that if there's any new updates provided and it will check every 24 hours if it's uh, been left on, it will notify you and then you can install them from the updater. The file manager has also had some improvements. They've simplified the toolbar slightly on there. So instead of having four icons, there's now two icons for list or icon view. And the window manager in general has rounded corners and a nice kind of shadow effect on it as well. I think the previous version had some of this, but this is a much more effective, efficient version of that. You will only get the new rounded version and the mutter if you have the two gig of memory. So this won't work on the Raspberry Pi Zero, even the new one. There's also a new video and new camera driver installed as well. And there is the bookshelf has been upgraded so that there's some new magazines in there as well. There are other bits and pieces such as Chrome that's been bumped up to version, I think it's 92 of the Chrome browser. And they've also optimized this as well to run on the Raspberry Pi just that bit faster. Another option, if you don't want to keep your files, the easiest way is to just use the Raspberry Pi imager software. And then you can download the brand new image from the raspberrypi.com website and you'll be up and running in no time. So one of the new utilities available on the, this version of Raspberry Pi OS is the USB webcam. So let's go ahead and install this. So we'll do sudo app install fs webcam. Okay, so that's now installed. So now we can just change some settings on there to make sure that this actually works. So we need to do sudo user mod a grant the access to video and we'll grant this to root. We'll also grant this to Pi, which is our current user. And let's try this. So if we do FS webcam and then just do image.jpg. Okay, so that's now taken a picture. Let's have a look at what that picture looks like. So there we go. There's a very flattering picture of me taken on the web camera. So the quality of this camera is obviously not as good as the Raspberry Pi's built-in camera that you can buy as a module. So one of the commands that you might not be familiar with is pinout. You could use pinout to find quite a few things out about your Raspberry Pi. And this is particularly useful if you have a number of Raspberry Pis, you remotely log into them and you want to know which one you're logged into. So if we type pinout and then return, just takes a couple of seconds. And if we scroll back up, we can see a little graphic there of the kind of Raspberry Pi that we're currently connected to. So I can see this is a Raspberry Pi Model 3 B Plus version 1.3. I can see the size of the RAM that's installed. This has got a gig of RAM. I can see the Ethernet ports and I can also see the pinouts themselves. So this is quite a useful way to very quickly just identify which Raspberry Pi you're on if you've got a number of them and they are different models. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I shall see you next time.